The historic eight-week-long opioid trial pitting Oklahoma against the Johnson & Johnson Company ended on Monday, and now the entire country awaits the ruling. With those comments, uh, we will adjourn the trial. Thank you. Cleveland County District Judge Thad Balkman now has all the facts presented by the state of Oklahoma and Johnson & Johnson attorneys in the state's opioid trial. Just before the nation's first lawsuit against opioid manufacturers got underway, Purdue Pharma and Teva Pharmaceuticals settled for millions of dollars, leaving Johnson & Johnson alone to defend itself. The kingpin and largest supplier of opioids in America accepts zero responsibility. During the eight-week trial, the state of Oklahoma claimed drug companies created the opioid crisis through their aggressive marketing toward doctors looking to treat chronic pain in their patients and accused Johnson & Johnson of being the spearhead. They created an oversupply. All of the risk factors, all of the criminality, it's existed forever. It existed in the early 90s, but we didn't have a heroin and prescription drug problem. We didn't have pill presses and counterfeit pills until they oversupply. Johnson & Johnson attorney Larry Ottaway argued the state kept changing the target when it comes to proving the company and its subsidiary Janssen caused a public nuisance with opioids in Oklahoma. When the state started this case and in its most recent filing, it says that Janssen's marketing of opioids for the use in chronic non-cancer long-term pain was the cause of the opioid crisis. <clears throat> that very narrow window, which this court was called upon to decide, has expanded. Ottaway claimed the state tried to convince the judge Jansen representatives lied to doctors about the dangers of opioids instead of showing how marketing caused the crisis. He also noted that Johnson & Johnson and its companies were trying to address a problem for 50 million Americans living in chronic pain. We have never denied the effects of opioid addiction on the citizens of this state or any other, but they have denied this. The risk of taking an opioid has always been listed on the labels of the medication, according to Ottawa. You've got a book in front of you, this thing, full of FDA approved labels, each one of which talks about the indications allowed and the risks of these drugs. Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services Commissioner Terry White served as the main architect of the state's opioid crisis abatement plan and spent two days on the stand. She believes Johnson & Johnson should have to pay billions of dollars to roll back the wave of opioid abuse and addiction Oklahoma has faced for more than 20 years. Abatement is to basically take us back to pre-96 levels of opioid prescribing, opioid overdose, neonatal abstinence syndrome, all of the things where we were prior to 96 when Johnson & Johnson as the kingpin of the operation began marketing opioids and pushing opioids for non-cancer pain use, for everyday pain, and causing the opioid crisis. She adds that Oklahoma didn't get into the crisis overnight and won't be able to get out of it overnight. What we have suggested and testified to as the state is that the crisis will take approximately 30 years to abate, but it can be abated. We can get back to pre-96 levels. White constructed the abatement plan so that Judge Balkman could have options should he rule in the state's favor. We've offered the judge a 30-year plan with multiple components. The judge has the option, though, to, to say that he thinks it will take less time should he choose, so we gave him the cost should he think that it should only take 20 years or 25 years. He can decide the number of years. He also has the option of deciding which elements in the abatement plan to fund or to fund the, abatement, the proposed abatement plan in its entirety. The 30-year abatement plan calls for approximately $17 billion to offer many different services. That range of services includes medication-assisted treatment for those struggling with opioid use disorder. It includes family drug courts so that children don't have to enter the foster care system, that their parents can get the help they need. It includes prevention services, K through 12 prevention, that can actually prevent kids from using opioids, misusing opioids in the first place because we unfortunately have such an oversupply. Other parts of the abatement plan include a law enforcement component, an expansion of the unused prescription drug collection program, and supplying naloxone to reverse opioid overdoses. 
At the end of the trial, Judge Balkman indicated it would be about two weeks before he rendered his decision. I'm Jason Doyle for the Oklahoma News Report.